Effusion is the escape of gas particles through a tiny hole into an evacuated space. This picture here illustrates effusion. We have a tiny gap between these two chambers. One side has gas particles, the other side initially doesn't. These gas particles are going to escape through that opening. There will then be a net movement of gas particles to the right here. Now there might be a few that end up on the right side and then end up sneaking back to the left, but there will be more moving from left to right than back from right to left. Diffusion, on the other hand, is the net movement of a substance from high to low concentration. So in this diagram we have a relatively high concentration of particles on the left and a relatively low concentration of particles on the right. In such a case, there will be also a net movement from the high concentrated region to the low concentrated region, which doesn't mean that there won't be some particles that go back the other way, but there will be a net flow from high to low concentration. And as we talked about in previous lessons, whenever gas particles are moving, that is in this case when they are effusing or when they're diffusing, the more massive gas particles on average are going to be traveling slower at a given temperature, the less massive particles will travel faster. For gases, rates of diffusion and effusion obey Graham's law. And there's Graham's law right there, where R is representing the rates, sometimes the speeds, of the two gases. M represents the molar mass, and T represents time. Now the units for this equation are not particular at all, as long as you have the same unit for both numerator and denominator, we don't have to be picky about units. Now to use Graham's law, both gases have to be at the same temperature. The rate of diffusion of gases is slower than the molecular speeds because of collisions. Gas particles at normal room temperatures travel very fast, hundreds of meters per second, but they don't actually move a hundred meters down there. In other words, they don't move, let's say, two football fields away in one second. And that's because there are many other gas particles that they bump into. So they just end up kind of migrating over time, even though they are traveling at hundreds of meters per second. It's been estimated that gas particles experience something like 10 billion collisions per second with all the other gas particles that are around them, which I find to be remarkable. The mean free path is the average distance traveled by a particle between collisions. The mean free path is shorter when the pressure is high. That is when the parts are compressed closer to each other, obviously the mean free path will be shorter. So let's do an example calculation with Graham's Law. CH4 moves 1.58 times faster than which noble gas? Here are our choices. It's like a multiple choice problem. It's one of these and we just have to figure out which one it is. So there's Graham's Law. We are not dealing with time here. So I'm going to cross that off. We are going to be dealing with masses because that's how we're going to identify which of these noble gases it is by the molar mass. And we are dealing with rates of motion. Let's find the molar mass of methane to be 16 grams per mole. And we're told that these particles on average are traveling faster. Which means helium is out because helium is lighter, having a molar mass of only 4, something that has a molar mass of 16 wouldn't be moving faster. It's one of these other five now, and let's assign some variables to Graham's Law. I'm going to call gas number 1 to be the methane, and gas number 2 to be the unknown. Be very careful how you orient your equation here, because according to Graham's Law, you can see that rate for gas number one is in the numerator, 
whereas molar mass of gas 1 is in the denominator. Don't get careless and put both the rate and the molar mass on top or on the bottom. Okay, so you can see on the right here, I've got the rate of methane in the numerator and the molar mass of methane in the denominator. We don't know the rate at which methane moves, nor do we know the rate at which the unknown moves, but we know that methane moves 1.58 times faster. So I'm just going to assume that the unknown moves at a rate of, say, 1 meter per second, which means that methane would move at a rate of 1.58 meters per second. Or if you don't like that, you could say, well, let's assume that the unknown moves at a rate of 100 meters per second, then the methane would move at 158. In any case, it's not going to change what you need to do. Let's get rid of the square root sign by squaring both sides. Let's solve for the mass of the unknown, and we get about 39.9 grams per mole. Are we looking at Ne2, or are we looking at argon? Because if you take two Ne's, that's really close to 39.9, and of course argon is right at 39.9, but neon is not diatomic. It's definitely going to be argon. Let's summarize. Effusion is the escape of gas particles through a tiny hole into an evacuated space. Diffusion is the net movement of a substance from a region of high concentration to a region of lower concentration. For two different gases at the same temperature, their rates of motion, molar masses, and times to travel a given distance are related by Graham's Law. And there it is on the right. And finally, the mean free path is the average distance traveled by a gas particle between collisions.